Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to make this spooky Halloween scene card using some products by Lawn Fawn including the Build a House die and Halloween add-on and we're also going to use the Christmas Yeti or Not stamp set and we're going to turn one of our little Yetis into a Yeti zombie and he is going to be hiding in some bushes in a graveyard and we're going to have him pop up. So to get started, let's work on our background. So the idea I had here was I wanted to make a spooky rainbow background. So I got out my Distress Oxide inks and these are the colors that I thought would be best to make kind of a spooky night sky. So they're all listed in the upper left hand corner. So I'm keeping the center of the scene yellow because that's where our little Yeti is going to pop up. And I wanted there to be a little like um, eerie glee, green glow around him. So that's why we have the green off to the left of our of our yellow. And then our sky is going to be a real pretty dark chip sapphire sky. And then around the bottom, we're going to have this like eerie glow with the seedless preserves and the wild honey and the wild honey and the seedless preserves mixed to make this really pretty orange that I like in the bottom. We're going to go around the edges of the scene with black soot to stress oxide ink just to help make it nice and dark and spooky and a little smoky as well into the background. And now it's looking pretty good to me. So once I get enough black on the edges, we're going to move on to our next stage, which is to add some little white spatter to the background. I've been doing this on all my cars lately. I just love the look. That is some white gouache and I just mix it with a little bit of water and then I just splash it all over the the background. So it looks like, I don't know, there's some electricity in the air, maybe some stars, just some eerie spookiness. And then to enhance the spookiness, we're going to take some liquid stardust by Lawn Fawn and just splash it all over the back as, as well. And this is going to have a real pretty sparkly effect. They almost look like tiny little crystals, like dancing a, a, along the background. That sounds a little corny, but it, that's what it looks like to me. Um, I added a little bit more liquid stardust because I wanted this to be really super sparkly. And there it is. There's our background. Now we're going to set it off to the side to dry while we work on our house. And here I'm just filling in the background for the windows and the door. So we're going to have an eerie yellow glow coming out from behind our doors and window. And the cardstock that I use for our house is the Lawn Fawn brown wood grain cardstock for the house. There are, when you buy the wood grain cardstock, it comes five to a pack and there's a light brown, a dark brown, a gray, and a white. So we're using the light brown and the dark brown for our little haunted house and our roof. And then I made the trim of the windows with just some black licorice cardstock. And now I'm just attaching all the little pieces together to make our house. So we have our little base of the house, which is cut out of that dark brown wood grain cardstock. And then the frame is black. And then I put a little dark brown door on top. And now to make the house look really spooky and haunted, we're going to go around the edges with some Distress Oxide ink. This is vintage photo, but I think any of the browns would work equally fine here. So whatever you have, just go around the edges to make it look a little spooky, a little dirty. It's going to help to make it look like there's a glow in the scene. And it's also going to help to make it look like the house is a little dirty. And then we're going to go around the edges with that black soot. I just love that effect. Again, it helps to add some shadows to the building. And then also it looks like there's even some mist surrounding the, the house itself. So once I get a good blend, then we're going to do the same to the roof. And the roof is pretty dark brown, so it, this black set's not going to show up so much, but I just thought, why not try? And then I added a little bit of the vintage photo as well to see if maybe that helped to give it like a little dusty look. And maybe it did. Not sure if it was worth it. Um, and now I'm going to do the same, just adding a little bit of shading along the roof. And that roof is with that dark brown wood grain cardstock as well. I'm going to add a thin line of glue with my multimedia matte adhesive around the window and the top of the house so we can attach the roof and then the window. 
and then I forgot to um, color this in before, so we're going to do it now. My hands were a little inky, so I got a little bit of black on the on the window and on my marker, so I just wiped that off, and then I thought that this helped to give it like a, a spooky, smoky look, so I ended up leaving it like that. Just going to add the house or the, the roof to the house. And now we're going to put a window on the side of the first floor. So this window is part of the add-ons for the Halloween stamp set. So this window is different from the window in the main die because it's kind of, it has um, a bigger angle at the top just to make it look a little bit wonky and spooky. So that's how it's different from the, from the main window in the main set. And then I'm just going to pop up our roof on one layer of foam tape and just attach that just like that. And now this is the fun part. I love decorating this house. So you get these little wood planks that we're going to attach to the window and I'm popping them up on some foam tape just to help give it a little bit more dimension and make those little wood, um, those little wood planks stand out. Then I'm adding a little bit more sheeting to the bottom. And now our spider web is cut out of the speckled eggshell cardstock that was just released. And then I also put a little bit of that brown distress oxide ink along the edges to make it look dirty and dusty. And then we attach a little spider on the web. We're going to give him some little glowing eyes with a white gel pen. And then we're going to have a little ghost peeking out of the door. And all those little pieces are included in the Halloween add-on die. Now comes a fun part or another fun part. There are lots of fun parts in making this card, at least for me. Now we're going to draw our little zombie Yeti. And I thought we would start by giving him a bright green monster zombie colored face. So I'm using YG01, YG13, and then YG67 for a little zombie's face and hands. And I added a little to the horns as well. And then we're going to color him in his body with a base of W1 because we want him to look like dirty and dusty, like he's been um, under the earth for a while because the idea is that he was in a grave and he's going to be popping up from the ground. And then I'm just adding his fur in varying shades of the warm grays just to make him look like once upon a time he was white, but then I guess... He died and then he got all dirty and dusty and this is what he looks like now as an undead Yeti. I took the die cut from the die set and I just cut him out and now we're going to work on the foreground of our scene. So these are little grassy hills dies that I cut out of noble fur cardstock and then we're just going to add some black along the top just to make it look like it's... Um, being illuminated by the the nighttime the nighttime glow in the scene and we're going to have two different layers and you'll see how that all works out in a second when we get to assembling the card and that looks good to me so we have our two little layers of grass the taller grass is going to be in the back and then the thin row of grass will be in the front we're going to put our sentiment on that thinner row of grass and it's going to say ghostly greetings and I'm using Versamark ink and then we're going to just use some white embossing powder and then heat set it. And that looks pretty good to me that I'm going to set it aside and now we can work on adding our pull tab to the card panel. So I'm just taking a ruler and putting a mark about two and a quarter inches to the left and then I'm going to add my little track die here and this die set is an add-on to the Let's Toast stamp and die set that was released earlier in 2019 and I'm just lining all of the little die pieces together so I know where I need to cut on my back panel and that piece at the top that's going to be where our lever is going to come out so I just need to leave a little groove there so that the recipient can put his or her fingers in there to kind of pull the little tab upwards. You'll see what I mean in a second. And because we have a front panel and a back panel, we need to put the little, um, the little cutout on the front panel as well. So I'm just lining that up again to make sure it's in the exact same spot as the back panel. Looks like I got it. That's looking good to me. Now we can take our little actual pull tab mechanism. 
So I die cut this out of 110 pound Nina cardstock. It's a heavy weight. We're also going to reinforce the back of the lever with another piece of Nina 110 pound cardstock just to make sure that it's nice and strong so that um, it stands up to the wear and tear of pulling the lever up and down. Now I am just drawing in a line so I know exactly where to put my little track guide. That's that little green piece of paper there. That's going to hold our lever in place so that it doesn't um, go off to the left or the right. So it just stays in a straight up and down position so that we can operate the little pull tab once the card's all put together. So I'm just cutting off the excess there. And then this is the little decorative piece that lets the recipient know to pull up. So I'm just going to attach that as well. And I save the little die cut piece that we cut out of the back panel. And we're just going to put our little decorative element right on top there just so that the scene looks nice and consistent. And then for the arrow itself, I just cut out a little arrow with some cilantro cardstock. And now we're going to add our back layer of grass to the back side of our front panel. And then we're going to add the smaller layer to the front panel. So one's going to be in the front and one's going to be in the back. And it's important that these little layers of grass are attached this way to the front panel to make sure that the little pull tab has enough room to um, work and, and not be obstructed by anything. So I just added our little zombie. Now I'm reinforcing the pull tab, like I said, by adding another piece of cardstock there. I'm gonna close the track, making sure it's a little loose because if it's too tight, um, it'll be harder to operate this little lever. Now I'm cutting off the feet on, on the zombie. I'm sorry, little Yeti, but we didn't want your feet sticking out of the bottom of the card. And now I'm gonna make a tombstone. So to make a tombstone, I'm just taking the haunted house door that's part of the Halloween add-on and I cut out um, the little door part and I just added a piece of storm cloud cardstock behind it. So it looks like we have a framed headstone that I just wrote rest in peace on it. And we're gonna add a little ghost right in front. So just, I don't think this die cut was intended to be used that way, but it's just another way to get some more miles out of your out of your die cuts and to have fun with scene building. So you can also turn that little haunted house door into a tombstone. Now I'm gonna add a very thin layer of foam ta tape along the edges here. And I'm using this 1 8 of an inch score tape by Doris. And I'm making sure to only use this score tape on this panel, even for the areas that are larger where you could fit a bigger piece of um, foam tape. And the reason for that is because all foam tapes are at slightly different thicknesses. And if you use different foam tapes on the same panel, you could have a lumpy panel. So it's always good, whatever foam tape you're using for a panel to just be consistent with it throughout, even if like here, you know, that looks a little weird having thin strips like on the back of a house, but it's going to make the scene all the same dimension and it's going to look better in the end. So that's why I'm using this thin foam tape here because my normal foam tape would not fit on the edges and I didn't want to have to worry about being precise with my cutting to cut it out to an eighth of an inch. So now I'm just going to line everything up the front and the back panel and that looks good to me. Our little Yeti is working. Now we're going to add the whole thing to a A2 size card panel and I'm popping it up on foam tape so that the recipient has room to put his finger or her finger um, underneath the pull tab on the top. If it was laid flat against a card base, you wouldn't be able to pull that lever up. So that's why we need the foam tape between our main card and the card base. Now I'm just decorating, so I'm adding some of the bats and the little ghosts um, from the Halloween add-on. And then I'm just gonna color in those windows, or not color them in, add some glossy accents to them just to make them look like they're glass. And I'm gonna add that underneath the little, the little wood planks there in the window. And then the last thing we're gonna do is add some 
of the liquid stardust to the little bats just to make them shiny, just for fun here. So I'm just applying that liquid stardust with a thin paintbrush. And that's it, so that's our scene. So here is our little Yeti zombie hanging out in the, in the graveyard that's next to this spooky haunted house with his little ghost friends. And I think that this will make a really, really great Halloween card. So that's all I have for you today, everyone. This is the end of my staycation series of card making videos. It's back to work for me tomorrow, but I will see you again on the weekends. Have a great week and I'll see you again soon.